Radon-222 is a radioactive gas that is found in soil, rock, and groundwater. It has a half-life of 3.82 days. Starting with 57.2 grams of radon-222, how much will remain after 25.5 days? Okay, so in this problem, we're talking about half-life. We have a radioactive isotope here. We're interested in the amount that we start with, the amount that we end with, so we're definitely talking about radioactive decay. There are kind of two ways to solve a radioactive decay problem. If we're given numbers that are really easy, sort of multiples of each other, we can kind of think through it with some basic arithmetic. But here, we're given messier numbers. 25.5 days, 3.82 days, they don't easily divide into each other, so that means that instead of basic arithmetic, we'll have to use a set of two mathematical equations. Let's review these two equations. We'll look at the parts, we'll see which variables we have and which we're going to be solving for. Okay, so first off, ln. ln is not a variable, it's a function, it's the natural log and this ln function is applied to everything in these parentheses. Okay, so then we have x0 or x sub 0. This is the amount of the substance that we're starting with. Is this a variable that we know, or do we have to figure it out? Well, it tells us right here how much we're starting with, so this is a variable that we know. Then down here, x x is the amount of the substance that we have after a certain amount of time. And that amount of time is t. So after time t goes by, we're left with x amount of the substance. Do we know this? No. This is what we're going to be solving for because we're asked how much will remain after this amount of time. So I'll put a little, a little question mark here because this is what we're going to be solving for. Okay, now k. K is a constant that's unique for each different substance. We're not going to get to it right now because there's an equation that has to do with K over here. T. T is the amount of time that goes by. We know that. We're given that it's 25.5 days. Now here's the other equation that we use. We use these two equations together. This tells us how to calculate K. So ln2, this is just a number that we can easily calculate. So we know that and then t one half, that's the half-life. That's given, so we know that. Since we know this, and we know this, we can calculate k, and we can then take k and plug it into that equation. So, these are what we know, and this is what we're solving for. Let's go through and just sketch out a quick plan. The first thing that we'll do is we'll calculate k using this equation. Then, once we have k, we'll be able to plug it into this equation, and we'll be able to solve this equation for x. Let's get started calculating k. Okay, using this equation, k equals ln2 divided by the half-life, which is 3.82 days. That's the D. Let's use a calculator for this. I've got the ln key right here on the calculator, so ln2, close the parentheses, divided by 3.82. There's the answer. I'm going to round this to three significant figures, because there are three significant figures in that number down there, so 0 0.181. Now what about the units? There were no units in ln2 up here, that was just a number. And then we have days in the denominator of this fraction. So we keep these units, days in the denominator of the fraction, we can also write that as days to the negative first or inverse days. This means that days are in the denominator of a fraction. Okay, so this is what k equals, 0 0.181 inverse days. Now that we have a value for k, let's go ahead and start plugging things into this equation. x sub 0. Do we know that? Yeah, we do. 
we're starting with 57.2 grams. And then x is what we're solving for, equals k, which is that, 0 0.181 inverse days times t, which is the amount of time that elapses or goes by 25.5 days. We're solving for x here. We eventually want to rearrange the equation so we can get x by itself, but we can't move x until we get rid of this natural log function that's around the fraction. We'll do that in a minute, but there's something that we can do right now. We can multiply these two numbers together. So we'll rewrite this, and then do 0 0.181 times 25.5. And that gives us rounded to three significant figures, 4.62. What are the units here? Well, we have days here and inverse days here. This is the same as having days on the numerator and days in the denominator, which means that days cancel and this value doesn't have any units associated with it. Now what we want to do is start rearranging this equation so that x is by itself. We're going to need to get rid of this natural log, this ln function, that's applied to this fraction. To get rid of an ln function, we take this and we put it as an exponent on e. We take e and we raise it to this as an exponent. And anything that we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. So we'll take e, and we'll raise it to this. And then on the other side of the equation, we'll take e, and we'll raise it to this. Here's what that's going to look like. There you can see, we took e, we raised it to this. And then we took e, and we raised it to this power here. Raising e to this power removes both e and the natural log, so we'll get this. We got rid of the ln, and now e to the 4.62, that's a number we can calculate. Most calculators have an e to the exponent key. e to the 4.62 gives us 101.5. So we can rewrite this as, now to get x out of the denominator, I'll multiply both sides of the equation by x, giving this. And now I'll divide both sides by 101.5. To solve for x, I just have to do this division. And we get x equals 0 0.564, rounded to three significant figures. What are the units here? Well, we have grams in the numerator. We have nothing in the denominator. So that means that those grams don't get canceled out. They carry through. And this is our final answer. Now, real quick, what are we actually solving for? What is x? Well, x is the amount of radon 222 that is remaining after 25.5 days if we start with 57.2 grams. So we start with 57.2 grams, 25.5 days go by, and we're left with 0 0.564 grams of radon 222. Once again, this is a nuclear decay problem, and when we have a more complicated nuclear decay problem like this, we usually use these two equations together to solve for a variety of these different variables.